Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives, and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. This program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners, and I in particular want to thank Lisa uh, for sending in a check to our P.O. Box. Uh, you can also support us in a one-time uh, donation, where we also have the uh, P.O. Box listed at support.greatdetectives.net. You can become an ongoing contributor at patreon.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it's time for today's episode of uh, Michael Shane, and the title is The Case of the Crooked Wheel. The big gun in his hand turned over and over. He leaned his face close to mine, hissing softly between his teeth. It was a face that held all the evil in the world, the kind that gets up close when somebody's going to die. Suddenly, everything shattered in front of me like a bulb smashed against a rock. I got the last funny flash. Michael Shane, a guy head deep in nothing. The New Adventures of Michael Shane, Private Detective. Michael Shane, reckless, red-headed Irishman, is back again in his old haunts in New Orleans. This is your director, Bill Russo, inviting you to listen to another transcribed episode, which we call The Case of the Crooked Wheel. Uh, Mr. Private Detective? Thanks. I was beginning to wonder whether that one line in Classified was worth the price. I observe, Mr. Detective, a man who has journeyed to an strange land. Observe a traveler who has come a thousand of miles to seek you out. You must be tired. Have a chair, traveler. Tell me what's on your mind. Oh, thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Detective... Uh, The name is Shane. Michael Shane. Oh, of course. Mr. Detective Shane, observe before you a man with a despicable habit. A habit I cannot seem to break myself of. Oh, why don't you try Doc Holloway down the hall? He's a psychologist there. You can lie down and talk about your troubles. Please, please. Uh, Perhaps I should come to the point, no? Yeah, that'd make things a little easier. Perhaps, uh... Ah, yes. Here. Observe it, if you please. Uh The Quito Casino, Mexico City, 25 pesos. What's it supposed to tell me? It is money. At the Paquito Casino, which I, Ramon Paquito, am sole and legitimate proprietor. It is worth 25 pesos, uh, like it says. And I, Ramon Paquito, give it to you. Free, gratis, uh, for nothing, no obligations. Yeah, thanks. Now, now, about this habit you've got, how bad is it? Aye, terrible. I give away money, Mr. Detective Shane. Every week at the casino, I give away thousands of pesos. Free, gratis, for nothing, no obligations? Precisely. Well, how can you make a living like that? Well, two days ago, I asked myself the same question. There is no future in it, so I come to see you. Well, if you want to unload your assets all at once, you've come to the right place. Now, please, Mr. Detective, your your humor is is a stranger to me. I uh, want you to save me from myself. What do you want me to do? Come to Mexico City with me. Find out why the Paquito Casino is losing money. Simple, is it not? That's going to cost you a chunk of dough, Mr. Paquito. Twenty dollars a day. That's a hundred pesos. Plain fare and expenses. Don't quibble about bagatelle, Mr. Detective. Now, will you come? Sure. Uh, Just one thing, Mr. Paquito. You said you wanted me to save you from yourself. What did you mean? Uh, Observe me well, Mr. Detective Shane. Yeah? Uh, Do I appear as a person who could uh, cut a man's heart out? No. I, Ramon Paquito, could do it with a smile on my lips. Yes, Mr. Detective Shane, if what I suspect is true, I could, I would whistle a song sentimental while I commit a murder. In just a moment, we'll return to the new adventures of Michael Shane and the case of the Crooked Wheel. (laughs) 
The airplane trip across the Gulf gave Senor Ramon Paquito the time he needed to fill in the details. Somebody had a gimmick to beat his roulette wheels. Another couple of weeks of the process, and Ramon would be wearing a serape and huarachas instead of a double-breasted pinstripe. All of which had made him angry enough to want to kill whoever was outsmarting him. We landed late the next afternoon. The senor registered me at the Hotel Blanco, gave me directions how to reach the casino later, and then took off. I decided to give the town a whirl before it was time to punch the clock. The shops on Avenue Nacional were a sight to see, but I couldn't afford much looking. I settled for a Mexican-style back scratcher, and then wandered down a side street for local color. It was just when I hit the first block of wooden shacks that two things happened. Suddenly, it wasn't daylight anymore, and suddenly, I wasn't alone. Picturesque, isn't it? Huh? A guy sleeps with a goat and a flock of chickens, and they call it picturesque. I'll bet a big tourist like you gets a bang out of that, huh? Now, look, mister, I... Your name's Shane? No, it's Pancho. Pancho el Diablo. Take him, Hugo, quick. The shadow that separated itself from a lot of other shadows wasn't quite as tall as a gorilla, but it was a yard wider. <laughs> it lurched toward me and spun me around. My punches <laughs> felt like I was trying to bang my way out of a rubber beach ball. And then the thing stopped playing. It hoisted me by the neck off my feet and started to squeeze. A, a bead of light exploded in front of my brain like a billion nickels. And then, then somebody had sense enough to pull down the curtain. first thought was that a, it's a lousy place to be dead in. Filthy room with a naked electric bulb dangling from the ceiling. Such a pretty man. I tried to focus, but it was too tough getting through the pain. Something was playing tricks with my hair. I curved my eyes backward, and then I knew for sure I'd been killed. There was an angel leaning over me. In time, I'd be able to make out the wings. Such a pretty man. Open your eyes, Chico. There. Oh. Uh, feeling better? You're a very lucky man, Mr. Hey, Shane. Oh. In a few more seconds, your neck would have been broken. Then both of us would have been unhappy. You and I. Yeah, who are you? Call me anything you like, Chico. Whatever suits you. That's a real dramatic touch, Angel. But who are you? How did I get here? I am Gabby. That's all you need to know. No, I, I need to know a lot more. Like, how did you get me here? Like, how do you know who I am? Simple, Chico. They carry you up here and went through your pockets. They would have killed you. Except I have a better idea. Like what? Use that return ticket to New Orleans. You can't get a meal in Mexico City like you can at Broussard. Look, Angel, let's stop playing patty cake. Who are those guys who jumped me? Oh. Then you see them? No, no. It was too dark. All the registered was a guy who talked lazy and a shadow who must have been Charlie Atlas's prize pupil. Well, then you are lucky. You better forget this whole rotten business and go home. Like a good boy. Who said anything about being a good boy? You hardly look in any condition to exert yourself, Chico. Now, well, come here. I hate you. Yeah. <laughs> now that we're practically soulmates, Gabby, start lying to me. Start from the beginning and make it a good story. What are you talking about? Who are you and what's this all about? Go home. Now, look, Angel. Go home, Mr. Shane. Go home before they pick you out of the gutter and put you to bed on a slab. With a tag around your toe. And she wasn't kidding. Did something frightening to watch that angel face tighten into a lot of hard lines. I knew I couldn't get any answers out of her, so I hopped a cab to where I figured there might be some. The Paquito Casino. Ramon Paquito's sole and legitimate proprietor. He saw me as I came through the door. Ah, Mr. Detective Shane. Hi. But, senor, you look lousy. Yeah, yeah, a couple of transplanted hoodlums felt like playing tag. I was it. Aye, that is very sad. Uh-huh. Well, in any case, you see, I have quite an establishment here, Mr. Detective. It would grieve me if I had to part with it. Yeah. Go say, Rojo, number 12 on the red, the red yeah, page. Yeah, quite a layer. Mark, un momento, come here. Pablo will take your place. I want to talk with you, Mark. Somebody special? Uh, Mark Hagen, the best croupier in Mexico. Ah, uh-uh, ah, Mark. This is Mr. Michael Shane, a friend of mine. Uh, show him around, Mark. Show him everything. Why, sure. I'm glad to know you, Mr. Shane. You from the States? New Orleans. I-, I leave you gentlemen now. There is much I must see about. Fine town, New Orleans. Sometimes I get a yen to go back there just to see how fine it really is. Is this joint legitimate, Hagen? Oh, it's as square as a box. 21, you hit 16, hold 17, dice, bet them any way you like, with the house or against, and a couple of little wheels. They gap? <laughs> 
Did Paquito tell you to ask me those questions? Yeah, there's a nasty rumor going on around that roulette wheels can be rigged against the house. You know, I don't like you, Mr. Shane. I don't know who you are or what you've got on your mind, but I don't play like that. Paquito is my friend. Okay, Hagen, I'm sorry. So I made a mistake. I tried and I was wrong. No hard feelings. Plenty of hard feelings, Mr. Shane. I think I'd like it better back at the table. You can look around by yourself. So I did. As far as I could see, nobody was dealing second cards. The dice didn't shimmy after they hit the backboard. And the roulette wheels were giving the house better than an even break. And then she walked in. Gabby. Angel face in an evening gown that wouldn't quit. All smooth and round and cotton candy blonde hair. She stood in the doorway and looked around the room, then nodded slightly to a guy in a fawn-colored dinner jacket that fitted him like a dream. I walked up to her, watched the frown grow at the corners of her mouth. You fool, get out of here. Oh, uh, ten years ago I had a vision about a woman who looked like you. You don't know what you're doing. There are a lot of women, Gabby, a lot of kinds of women. I don't know whether I like that or not. You don't scare me, so I do, Mr. Shane. Not very. Should I be scared? Suit yourself. It's your life. Yeah, and I expect to take it back with me. To coin a phrase, Mr. Shane, I make book on that. And I'll coin one right back at you, Angel. Five will get you ten. Hasta mañana, redhead. Only for you, tomorrow won't happen. I watched her sway the path through the ankle-deep rug to the blackjack table. She bought some chips and busied herself with the game. I took a stand at the roulette wheel next to the fawn-colored jacket and watched. Just watched. There was something to see. Men and women expensively dressed with that same look of fascination you see around a cockfight in back of a barn. Cinco Negro, number five on the black. Oh, I'm sorry, senor. You Uh, placed your money after the ball had settled. The house cannot accept your bet. What are you talking about? I had that hundred peso bill down before you started to spin. I'm sorry, senor, but that is not so. Hey, what kind of a two-bed joint is this anyway? Sure, I had my money down. These people will tell you. The house insists you take back your money, senor. There is no question about the honesty of this casino. Look, now pay me, brother, before I take this dive apart. You first. Any trouble, Mark? Yes, this gentleman, he placed a bet after the wheel had started. He's talking through his hat, mister. Give me my dough. Your hundred pesos, senor, the bill you laid down on the table. Now, if you please, get out. And he did, too quickly. The big guy folded the bill carefully, winked, grinned, and got out. In another second, I knew the reason why. Fawn-colored jacket was shoveling in a stack of chips from the number five square. All according to house rules, except he hadn't bet any chips on the number in the first place. I ducked out of the casino just in time to see the big guy disappear around the corner. I raced down the walk, but he was nowhere in sight. Then, like it says in the correspondence school lessons, I knelt down to look for footprints in the soft grass. (laughs) You're looking for me, Shane. Should I be? Shane is a detective. You're a phony. You couldn't detect foul play if you came across a corpse in the trunk. Oh, no, but good enough to figure out that pitch you pulled back there in the casino. Give me a reading, Shane. What did I do? You and the little man in the dinner jacket. You threw down a hundred peso note with a blue chip underneath it. You get thrown out, dinner jacket collects 35 to 1. <laughs> You're a pigeon, boy. You followed me just like it was figured you would. Can't you talk without that gun in your hand? Uh-uh. It's good for shooting pigeons. Right now, you. Now, wait a minute. No more minutes, Shane. You got no more time. Bite your lip or say a prayer or just close your eyes and take it. It's all yours, boy. Now, hold on to it. Big gun in his hand turned over and over. He leaned his face close to mine, hissing softly between his teeth. It was a face that held all the evil in the world, the kind that gets up close when somebody's going to die. Suddenly, everything shattered in front of me like a bulb smashed against a rock. I got the last funny flash. Michael Shane, a guy head deep in nothing. In just a moment, we'll return to the new adventures of Michael Shane and the case of the Crooked Wheel. There are some guys in this world crazy enough to leave their happy home just for the opportunity of getting choked by a gorilla and getting shot by a man who has fun watching people fold up under the impact of a slug. Guys like me, all for 20 bucks a day in expenses. And it started out as a simple noggin job, trying to ferret out who was beating Senor Ramon Paquito's roulette wheels at his casino in Mexico City. Only somebody was having a personal fiesta having me bounced around. 
As a result, I was catching the habit of waking up in strange rooms after each current beating. This time, I fought my way through the numbness in my right shoulder long enough to squint out of what was around me. There were several things. Daylight, four walls, a roulette wheel on a round table, and a guy I'd seen once before who I figured didn't ever want to see me again. Mark Hagen, Senor Paquito's number one croupier. Take it easy, Shane. You better not try to move for a while. Hey. Didn't know you cared, Hagen. I brought you to my room. It seemed like the only decent thing to do. How'd you find me? I followed you. I was afraid I was a little too late. I apologize for that. Yeah, what made you come after me? That gag they pulled with the palm chip is the oldest dodge in roulette. I had an idea you were a right guy after you went after that big fellow. I had an idea I could be of some help. Did you ever see those guys before? The big one and the skinny lad he worked with? They've been around. The fellow you followed is called Hugo. The other one's named Drew. I didn't know they knew each other. Yeah, I should have been more careful. That guy Hugo has a sense of humor that could kill you. I don't worry about it anymore. I removed the bullet. You, you removed the bullet? It's an old hobby of mine, taking bullets out of people. I made a living at it 15 years ago. I was a specialist until the law got interested. You were a doc? <laughs> class of 28 Midwestern, class of 35 Danamora. License revoked for uh, malpractice. Profile of Mark Hagen, bum. So you drifted down here and went to work for Paquito? Well, it's a living, Shane. Being a croupier has its points. Nobody asks questions. Mm. Gives you a chance to use your hands, doesn't it? Uh, yes. What made you ask that? A roulette wheel on the table. Did you get enough practice at the casino? <laughs> Sometimes, my friend, it's an indiscretion to inquire into motives. Look, I'll, uh, I'll tell you something, Hagen. It could be a wild, wild dream, but I'll tell you about it anyhow. Yeah? About you, maybe. About a croupier clever enough to spin a wheel in such a way that the ball drops in any slot he wants. Oh, you're out of your mind, Shane. Maybe, but I don't think so. It's been done before. I, I can't give the place and date, but it's been done. As I remember it, the croupier was a frustrated violinist. He had no talent for the violin, but he could make that wheel whistle Dixie. Just like you. Go on. Yeah, an ex-surgeon could get the same idea. A man who could do things with his hands, intricate things. What other reason for the roulette wheel on that table over there? Practice. Uh, what are you going to do about it? I could tell Paquito. It's what he hired me for. If you did that, I'd kill you. Yeah, maybe you would at that. Well, that's a promise, Shane. Okay, Hagen. See, I... Mark, I... Oh! Say no more, Hagen. Come on in, Gabby. Close the door. Congratulations, Mr. Shane. Oh, you two know each other? Sure. Yesterday, your lady love was making book I'd be washed up on the beach. I see you almost made it, the redhead. What stopped you? Say, what is this? Hagen, I'm going to do you a favor. I'm going to give you some advice. What makes you think Mark needs your advice? Get rid of her, Hagen. She's no good for you. She's no good for anybody. Don't listen to him, Mark. Uh, go ahead. Sure. Now, see if you can follow me. I come to Mexico City and immediately get beat up by two thugs. I wake up in Gabby's room. She claims that if it wasn't for her, they would have killed me. He's lying. I met him at the casino. Now, understand, Hagen, I'm a stranger here. The only reason anyone would want me out of the way is because I could have been hired to queer his act. Okay so far? Yes, it makes sense. So it follows that Gabby had made some sort of play with these thugs. Maybe something you don't know about. Throw him out, Mark. Everything he says is a lie. You're being very impolite, my dear. Uh, the way it looks from here, Hagen, is that little Gabby has you framed for a fall guy. From here, that's the only way I see you it. You rat on shaman's eyes! You... Hey, you sit down. You sit down and shut up. I I'm getting out of here. I don't want any part of you, Hagen. You or your... You're staying, dear. I can't afford to let you out of my sight. Mr. Shane might be having a wild dream, as he said, but I can't take the chance. Now sit down. I left the happy couple and walked out into the midday Mexican sunshine. Things were beginning to add up. The guy who nearly broke my neck and the man with the gun were the same. That was Hugo. I heard the name before I passed out the first time. And it was an even bet that the lazy talker and the dapper gent named Drew were identical. But for a one-armed detective without a license to carry a gun in Mexico, there wasn't much I could do about either one of them. Well, it was time to go back and resign my job. I couldn't put the finger on Hagen anyhow. 
So I caught a cab to the Paquito Casino, walked into the senor's private office. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Each time I see you, Mr. Detective, you look worse. Perhaps this climate doesn't agree with you. As a matter of fact, senor Paquito, the time has come to bid a reluctant farewell to the land of Montezuma. Mr. Detective, observe before you a person who is deeply puzzled. Yeah? A few minutes ago, I received a call by telephone from Mark Hagen. He is leaving my employ. Yeah, when? Tonight. Tonight, he will be coupier for the last time at the Paquito Casino. I don't understand why. You tell me why, Mr. Detective. Ah, uh, your guess is as good as mine. Maybe the climate doesn't agree with him either. I, this I doubt. Mr. Detective, you have observed, Senor Hagen. What is your impression as to his integrity? Like I said, your guess is as good as mine. It isn't up to me to guess anyhow. You can mail me what you owe me to New Orleans. I'm quitting, senor. Yes, but why? Every time somebody tries to knock me off, they come a little bit closer. Now, hasta whatever it is to Oh, you. wait, wait. Look, just this evening. Remain here at the casino. This I ask you as a favor personal to, to Ramon Paquito. I even say please, listen. Please. Well, I don't know, senor. I don't know what good I can be to you. Well, perhaps no good at all. You just stay here. Observe. That is all I ask you to do. For this... Double wages, double expenses. Well... Very well, triple. Sunday night, triple play. Agreed? Agreed, senor. I will observe. In another hour, the joint began to fill up. And a few minutes after that, Gabby walked into the room, still looking like an angel, the way some women who are devils do. She strolled over to the roulette table where Hagen was raking him in. He put a stack on the red... There wasn't a sign of recognition between Hagen and the girl. Siete, rojo, seven pays, red pays, number seven on the red. Place your bets for the next spin. No bets can be made after the wheel starts. On the next spin, the girl won again. Then she lost. Soon she began to double her bets and kept winning more times than she didn't. When she started to play individual numbers, she made the law of averages look like something that hadn't passed Congress yet. Just before she bet number four, I watched Hagen fold his thumb under his palm and rub the side of his face with the rest of his hand. Cuatro negro, four pays, black pays, number four on the black. <laughs> the young lady seems to be lucky this evening. I've been observing you. Well, why not this evening, Senor Paquito? I am always lucky at your table. Yes, I have observed that too. Mark, Mark, stop the wheel. I wish to see just how lucky this young lady is. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you will pick up your bets. If you care to play there at the other tables, please... This wheel shall be used exclusive to test the young lady's uh, luck. But, senor... It is your intention to break the bank, is it not so? Spin the wheel, Mark. It was simple enough to figure out. The two of them, Hagen and Gabby, were making a one final grab at a whole lot of money. Whatever his friendship for Paquito might have been, Hagen was forgetting all about it. The girl and the dough. And he had a foolproof gimmick to do it. In another hour, there were roughly a hundred thousand pesos stacked in front of the girl. If the young lady doesn't mind, there's a gentleman who wishes to join her. It was a dapper lad in a dinner jacket. The guy named Drew. Gabby stiffened when she saw him. I don't know. This is my last spin. Well, now, that's too bad, ma'am. I had the idea I could ride along on your streak. I'd be very disappointed, ma'am. But I thought, Senor Paquito... It's that... quite all right, young lady. The gentleman informs me he wishes to make his wager in the identical sum and number as you do. It's just like the senor says, ma'am, one spin, any amount. I guess I can take a chance. You're doing all right. Very well. All of it. I bet the whole amount on number one. Good, that's fine, ma'am. Number one it is. Hundred thousand pesos riding right along with you. Spin the wheel, mister. It was a sight to see. The girl, a knuckle clamp between her teeth. Paquita with a tight little smile and Drew staring. That's all, just staring down at the table. The only one who moved was Hagen. His right hand slid across his chest to the inside of his coat. Press, Rojo, number three, pays. Why, you double Drew, cross... Drew, oh, oh, The flash from Drew's gun lit on a flying steel blade. Hagen spun across the room, hammered back by the bullets that tore through his chest. Drew stopped shooting and tried to speak. His words stuck on the knife blade in his throat. They almost fell into each other's arms. I turned just fast enough to see the girl disappear through the side entrance, and I went after her. Outside, there was nothing. I, I hailed a cab and gave him directions to the only place I knew where to look, Gabby's room. I took the wooden stairs three at a time, down the hall to the door mark number six. But he's through, but that's just the way it happened. Oh. Well, come in. 
Come on, boy. Looks like we're the only ones left. Huh? Yeah. Everything you have a part of dies, doesn't it, Hugo? <laughs> Too true, boy. It looks like I'm batting 1,000 a day. Hugo, no. Hugo, put that gun away. <laughs> no more killing, Hugo. No more, no. <laughs> In a moment, we'll be back with a thrilling climax to tonight's Michael Shane adventure. I watched the smoke curl up from the snout of Gabby's revolver, mix with her yellow hair, and then float up to the ceiling. She stared at Hugo's crumpled body, let the gun drop from her limp fingers. I picked it up. Then she stared at me. Aren't you going to thank me for saving your life? Sure, thanks. You killed Hugo to save your own beautiful skin. You are mixed up, Redhead. You killed him because you knew he'd never believe your story about what happened at the casino. He didn't have enough time. Hugo enjoyed killing too much himself, especially people he thought crossed him. What are you talking about? You had a good pitch with Hagen. He could put that ball in any number or color you bet on, but that wasn't enough for you. Hardy. Doesn't matter now, really. You thought you could double your profits by throwing in with Hugo and Drew. Yeah, maybe you were going to double-cross them, too. I don't know. There's still plenty enough for both of us. Take your choice, Angel. The police or Paquito? We go away together, you and I, tonight. There's a plane out of here in a half hour. We can make it. We're good for each other, already. Listen. Listen to me. There's still plenty. Yours and mine. Listen to me. Hello, operator. Listen to me. Give me the police. <laughs> This is your director, Bill Russo, again. Our story is based on characters created by Brett Halliday. The New Adventures of Michael Shane is a Don W. Sharp production, transcribed in Hollywood and distributed exclusively by the Broadcasters Guild. This is Andrea J. Graham, author of the Web Surface series. Oh, and a madam's wife. You're listening to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. Welcome back. Well, yeah, in the middle of the episode, um, Michael Shane he listed uh, all the uh, disadvantages he had in uh, Mexico as someone who is a licensed private investigator and licensed concealed carried weapons carrier in New Orleans, which does kind of raise the big question at the heart of this episode. Why didn't the casino owner hire somebody local or at least somebody who had more authority and ability in this area? But other than that, it's just pretty much standard uh, uh, Radio Michael Shane fare. Now to listener comments and feedback, and we have a comment regarding the TV, Michael Shane, uh, who's, uh, with, uh, Jennifer saying that Saran rap commercial in the middle of the video theater was, uh, hysterical. I'm gonna have to find that somewhere, or figure it out how to record it from screen. Uh, well, thanks so much, Jennifer. And actually, all of our videos, um, if you, you can download them to the computer directly from our website, just put in the video theater, uh, number and, uh, you're able to pull that up. So if you ever have a video like that, that you'd like to save to your computer, certainly can. All right. Well, that will do it for today. Uh, join us tomorrow. The lineup rejoins our lineup. And then next Monday, listen to another episode of Michael Shane. In the meantime, send your comments, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. And become one of our friends.